Hello, third graders. So this video is going to rem be reminding you about everything, well not everything, a lot of what we've done in third grade this year for subtraction. So before you can do any of these strategies, you have to know when to use subtraction. So subtraction is the inverse of addition. Addition is joining, subtraction is separating things. Now, separating can be um, kind of like three different things. So let's look at this um, example here. I'm gonna be using this equation for all of these. So let's say that I have 324 light bulbs and 168 of them break. So I had a bunch and I've separated the broken ones and they are going away, okay? So sometimes separating means that something's going away. We've lost it, we've broken it, we've sold it, we've given it away. Sometimes separating can be I have 324 uh, gummy bears and 128 of them are red and the rest are blue. My gummy bears aren't going anywhere, I'm just separating them, okay? So if I take my 324 and I take away the red ones, I'm left with the green ones or the blue ones, whatever the color was. All right, so separating can be things going away, it can be just taking a large group and putting them into small groups. And sometimes separating is comparing. And this is the one I most frequently see forgotten, okay? So let's say that it's there are 324 um, red birds and 168 yellow birds. No birds are going anywhere. I'm just comparing how many more red birds there are than yellow birds. So you often would use subtraction for a question like that or how many fewer red birds, fewer yellow birds than red birds. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started in showing you the different strategies we've used. I will be doing that standard algorithm last because in order to truly understand why we're crossing things out and moving things around, it's because of what's truly happening with the numbers. So I have 324. With subtraction, I'm never getting more, I'm actually taking things away and separating them so I cross out. And I want to start in the ones place. Okay, so I have four and I'm supposed to take away eight. Hmm. Well, that doesn't make sense. I'm not going to panic. I'm not going to switch numbers around. I'm going to think, I need more ones. And I get them from the tens. Just like in addition, you use ones to make tens. I can use tens to get more ones. So I'm going to take a ten here and I'm going to turn it into ten one. Sometimes people call this borrowing or ungrouping or decomposing. So now I actually have 14 ones and now I can definitely take away eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The biggest mistake I see here is people just not carefully subtracting things. So if I look, how many ones do I have left? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I have six ones left. Now we move over to the tens. I'm supposed to subtract six. Hmm, this makes me feel a lot like this one. Now keep in mind, this was not subtracting. I have not subtracted any tens yet. This was an ungrouping or a decomposing. So where do tens come from? Hundreds. So I'm gonna take a hundred and I'm gonna get more tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So now I actually have 11 tens. I can totally take away six now, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I look, I have one, two, three, four, five. Five, oops, I'm gonna move this over here. Five tens left, six ones, five tens. And now I need to subtract 100. Well, that wasn't subtracting, keep that in mind. That is not the one I'm subtracting. That was the one that I decomposed. Now I'm gonna subtract a one, and I have 100 left. So there's 156, and that's called the difference in subtraction. All right, down here to expanded form. Let me, 324, 168. I've lined up my ones, my tens, my hundreds. That's important. <coughs> All right, over here, four minus eight. Now I wanna be careful not to let those plus signs trick me because I'm doing subtraction. Well, what I see often is people go, oh, I can't do that, so I'm just gonna flip my numbers around. Not in subtraction, you can't. So, in order to get more ones, I get them from the tens. So 20 turns into 10, so four can turn into 14. So now I can do 14 minus eight, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, six. All right, bring down those plus signs, but I'm not adding. 
All right, 10 minus 60, that's another one I cannot do. But I can get more tens from the hundreds. 300 becomes 200, so 10 can become 110. All right, so 110 minus 60 is 50. And if you aren't sure about that, do a little drawing of some kind. Or think 110, 100, 90, 80, 70, 60. I had to take away 50, or I'm left with 50 left. All right, bring down those plus signs, even though I'm subtracting, and now an easy 200 minus 100. Leaves me with 100. Back together, 156. All right, so we've done the drawing strategy in expanded form. Now we're gonna do the number line strategy. I'm gonna start at 324, and I'm gonna go backwards 168. I'm gonna start in the ones place, just like I've done everywhere. So I'm gonna take away, oops, I'm gonna take away eight. So 324, 323, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 316. All right, now I'm gonna take away 60. Ooh, this is gonna be a big one. I'm actually gonna do it like this this time. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Each of those is a minus 10. So if I take 10 away from here, that's 306. Ooh, this is the tricky part. 296, 286, 276, 266, 256. And then finally a minus 100 would give me 156. This takes a lot of organization and a lot of number sense knowing how to work with my numbers. All right, lastly, the standard algorithm, the way that a lot of us wanna be doing, but it's best to come to this after you understand what's actually happening with the numbers. So again, I'm gonna start in that ones place. Four minus eight. Well, I know that I can't flop the numbers around. I know I need more ones. So two becomes one, so four can become 14. 14 minus eight is six. Oh, here I am again. I can't do one minus six, but three can become two, so one can become 11. 11 minus six is five. And then two minus one is one. So again, I got the same difference every time. All right, and lastly, I'm gonna show you a tricky example of subtraction. So it's when you have something like this, there were 576 French fries, and some of them were taken off my plate, and now there's only 193 left. So, you have to work carefully here. Six minus something equals three. Well, if I have six, and I take away something, I'm left with three. Oh, I took away three. Six minus three is three. That was pretty simple. This is where it gets tricky. Seven minus something equals nine. Well, the mistake I often see is people flip things around and they do nine minus seven. Well, I can't do that. So how could I make this work? Hmm, maybe instead of seven, it was 17, but it couldn't be 17 unless this became four. So 17 minus nine, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine, eight. Okay, and then four minus something equals one. Uh oh. If I have four and I take away three, I'm left with one. So my unknown here was actually this middle number, 383 french fries were taken off my plate. All right, so use whatever strategy feels best for you or challenges, use a different one each time. And be extra careful when your unknown moves around in subtraction, because we're used to the unknown being here every time. So be extra careful.